In 2024, everybody needs a beta watch. But what is a beta watch? And what are the best ones on the market? Let's get into it. Yes, and welcome to the Mad Watch Collector Show. Today is all about the beta. Understanding what one is, what to look for when you're buying one, and explaining to you why in 2024 everyone needs a beta watch. Not me! Okay, maybe not the watch snobs. But for the rest of us good old honest watch enthusiasts, I think you need one. And chances are you've already got one. But if you haven't, I've got a great selection at the end of this show that are perfect for beating around in. <laughs> So, first question is, what the heck is a beta watch? Now, the definitions of a beta watch aren't massively specific, and we've all got our own thoughts on what we think a beta watch is. But for me, first of all, this watch has got to be very affordable. So affordable that if it was to ever get scratched, dented, scuffed, banged, you wouldn't be too bothered and would buy another one. So a watch that you own that you see a scratch on and you don't go, oh, yeah, it's not painful to see the scratches. The beta watch is there in your collection to do all your hard graft for you. The lawn mowing, the DIYing, the exercising. Anyway, the first one is affordable. Second thing is, yes, it may be affordable, but if the watch is discontinued now, it might be quite hard to find that watch again. This watch can't be discontinued and has to be readily available for whenever you want to buy another one. If you ever do need to buy another one. Three, no matter what you put this watch through, it will still survive and be reliable. So yes, it can take a pound in. It has a good water resistance. The watch, even though it's affordable, still has to be built well. Number four, it's got to be hassle free. You can't look after this watch and it has to look after itself and you shouldn't need to protect it under a sleeve. You are proud of owning this beta watch and for every scuff and scratch you put on it, well, the more stories and memories you can hang on it. Last one for me, I think is quite important just to me, is legibility. If I'm doing sport or whether I'm deep in the forest or the Sahara Desert, I want a very legible timepiece where I'm not staring at the watch for too long to read the time. The last thing I want to do when I'm running is stare at the watch for too long just in case I run into a pole. I think it's got to be comfortable. You don't really want to feel it on the wrist. You're doing a specific job. You're hard at work. You don't want to feel like one arm is weightier than the other. Um, could you just click that like button, please? It really helps the channel. Thank you. So just there, I think that gives you a good guide of what a beta watch should be. And if you've got any other sure signs of what you think a beta watch is, stick it in the comments below. Now, before I give you my favorite 10 beta watches I own, yes, I do own quite a few. I'm sorry about that. Let me give you some examples of watches that are definitely not beta watches, because then I think you and me are gonna be on the same page with everything, you know? <coughs> Me, personally, I wouldn't say a vintage watch, no matter what it was, is a beta watch. Case in point, this 1979 Seamaster Baby Plo Prof. There aren't many of these watches around, plus this comes with a very heavy price tag. They are two no-nos. Next up, the beautiful limited edition Casiotron. Yes, a watch I was very lucky to get a couple of weeks ago. Any watch that is a limited edition probably means if you are to sell it or to bash it or to break it, finding another one's going to be quite tricky. Plus, as you can see, this watch is mostly polished and if it were to get proper banged up, I'd be pretty annoyed. Plus, yeah, it costs a lot of money. Same too with the Grand Seiko Snowflake Quartz I reviewed last week. It is, for all intents and purposes, a dressy watch. And to finish off a watch, Grand Seiko do Siratsu polishing, which is give the watch a mirrored finish. Playing football with one of those is a definite no-no. What about my full metal squares. Beautiful watches that you know can take a beating, but you just don't want to. Again, these watches weren't cheap. Getting a good scratch on them would definitely hurt. Oh. And even though you know deep down they can take a beating, you wouldn't want to try to. Another good example of watches that you probably shouldn't bash about are ones with complications. The more complications you have in a movement, the more little intricate wheels and cogs you have inside there. One swift 
crash and those cogs and wheels are rattling a good un and can damage the movement. This Seagull 1963 is a fantastic watch that is very affordable, but I wouldn't class as a beta. It has the Seagull ST19 movement inside and the movement, although it is beautiful, isn't particularly shock proof. And these watches have been known when they have taken a bit of a tumble to go kaputski. Companies would rather replace the whole movement than try and fix it. <laughs> So those are good examples of watches that you would call non-beaters. Now let's give you some good ones. And there's no getting away from it. The King Beater brand is obvious. It's Casio, isn't it, eh? My favorite budget beater is definitely the W86. A beefed up resin version of the F91W. Feels comfortable on the wrist. Looks good. Can take a beating. And the backlight is very legible. If you want to spend a couple more quid, then the obvious choice is then to go with the AE1200, the Casio Royale. This watch gives you a 10 year battery life. It's got 100 meters water resistance and you know this thing can take a beating. But what if you don't like digital? You like to see some hands. Well then the MRW-200H is the perfect watch for you. Still only around 20 pounds. This watch not only looks twice as expensive, but is 100 meters of water resistant and can take a beating. But the cream of the crop, obviously when it comes to Casio and beaters, you've got to spend a little bit more money, 60 to 70 pounds. But the obvious choice is always a G-Shock. My preference will always be the DW5600. For anyone that's getting into G-Shocks and beaters, it is literally shock proof. That's what it does on the tin. G, short for gravity, shock, is literally an anti-shock watch. With 200 meters of water resistance, feels comfortable on the wrist, is one of the smallest G-Shocks in the lineup. But if you want to future-proof your G-Shock, well then it's the GMW5610U that comes with solar power and for me that watch is probably the best beater on the market. Obviously you've got brands like Timex, Armitron and Squee that also offer digital watches. I personally just go with tried and tested that I've tested and loved for the last 30 years. Super! But I know what some of you are saying. We don't want quartz or digital. I hear you. Yes yeah, some of you may want mechanical watches. In that case we're looking for two types. Field watches and diamond watches. Usually these ones have movements that are built for taking a bit of a shock. Now back in the day my chosen dive watch beta was the SKX013. This watch is not a beta anymore. I bought mine for £150 in 2017. The watches are discontinued now so finding one will be hard. If you are lucky to find a brand new one they come with a huge price tag. So two red flags tells me it's not a beta watch. However, for under £150, you can get the Citizen Pro Master Diver, a very cool rugged watch with a Myota movement in it, you know is gonna survive literally anything. Also with the watch being automatic, it really takes care of itself. Spend a little bit more money, still under £200, and then you've got the Orient Kamasu, which is one of my favourite affordable dive watches out there. In-house movement, beautiful dials. If you don't want to go with a diver, then you're looking at something like the SRPG 29K1, a 39mm field style watch that has 100 meters water resistant, it's automatic, it hacks and hand winds, and you know that watch can take a beating. Will you be annoyed if you scuff it up? Some of us might be. One of my favourite beta watches, definitely for work, is the G10. A watch that was issued to the British Armed Forces for decades. Yes, it has a Swiss Ronda Quartz movement in it, but you know this is tried and tested. <laughs> All the watches I've just shown you are affordable. You wouldn't mind getting a scratch on them. You could replace them and they're very reliable. Don't forget comfortable. Now I've known people that own Rolex Submariners that also own Invicta Pro Divers. They love the Submariner look throughout the week and only save the Submariner for special occasions. Meanwhile, the Invicta does all the dirty work, slogging away in the mud, in the rain, while the Submariner gets treated like a king. Only yesterday I was talking to a Cartier tank owner that also owns the Seiko tank I reviewed a few months ago. Cartier for the 
snazzy times, Seiko for the hard times. And that's cool. How many of your watches would you class as beaters? Do you have any? Every good, honest watch collector should own a beater watch. I think it's a must. I read a comment from a lovely chap who owns a Black Bay 41 and he classes that watch as his beater. He wears it every day, sometimes sleeps with it. Weird. And showers with it also. Double weird. But our beta watch can go anywhere, can't it? Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you want a bit more of the Mad Watch Collector channel, why don't you click there and join, yeah? Want some merch? Who doesn't? Click down there somewhere. But if I've got you for a few more minutes, why don't you check this bad boy out? <laughs> this is, well, it is special, no? Some of you might think no, but click it. Go on, click it. Click, click it.